In this session, we're going to use Civil 3D to convert wireframe geometry into a solid model, such that it can be leveraged in InfraWorks. This recording represents part two of a three-part series. As you can see, we're picking up where we left off in the last session. I have already created these geometric shapes using AutoCAD's solid modeling tools. This time around, we are going to model this pad and ramp area using Civil 3D functionality. I'm going to start by tracing the boundary of the solid that I'd like to create using a 3D polyline. Let's change the current layer color first. I'm going to press Control-1 to bring up the Properties palette, and then we're going to make sure that the current color is cyan. This way I'll have a little bit of visual contrast compared to the yellow that I already have on screen. Note I am still in the 3D modeling workspace. Here in the draw panel I'm going to launch the 3D poly command and I've got my running object snap turned on. I'm going to start here at the end point in the lower left corner and then I'm just going to feel my way around this tracing this object. We'll work our way all the way around. The nice thing about the 3D poly command is it's creating a polyline in three-dimensional space so each end point can have a different elevation. Let me hold my shift key and the mouse wheel will spin this around. In fact, I'm going to model all the way up to the top of this ramp. Let's come over to maybe here, here, here. Basically, I'm tracing the pad. Let's come down to the end of the retaining wall and then we'll spin this around. We'll come down to the bottom of the ramp and then I will connect to the corner. We'll hit the bottom corner here to here. We'll work our way up the other side. Almost there, we've just got to wrap around these stairs. There we go, and then I'll hit C to close. So I've got a nice closed shape that represents the area where I'd like to create my solid model. Now let's flip over to the Civil 3D tools. I'll open the workspace and I'll choose Civil 3D. And then since I've got some duplicated geometry at these edges, I'm going to come down and turn on my selection cycling just to make things easier to select. Let's build a surface from that 3D polyline that I just made. Here on the Home tab in the Create Ground Data panel, I'm going to open the Surface menu and choose Create Surface. I'm going to call this surface Temp. We're only going to have it for a short amount of time. Let's go to the Style menu. Let me open this up, and I'm going to choose a style that displays the triangles. I'll choose this one, Existing Ground Orange. Let me click OK and OK. Now that I've created the surface, let's add data to it. I'll do that by going to the Modify ribbon. I'll choose Surface. I'd like to add data. We'll add a break line. I'm going to keep all the defaults and I'll click OK and then I'll select this edge. Since I've got the selection cycling turned on, I can easily select my cyan polyline and I'll press enter. So far so good. We can see the triangulation, although I have some extra triangles that I don't need in the area of the stairs. Not a problem. Let's isolate some of the geometry that we have on screen. I'm going to select the surface and then I'll select this edge. I also want to get my 3D polyline. When both of those items are selected, I'll come down to the lower right corner. I'll open the isolate menu and I'll choose isolate objects. I will then view this from a top view. I'll do that by typing plan and I'll press enter twice. Let's zoom in. And I don't need to see this shaded anymore. Let me open the in canvas menu and I'll choose 2D wireframe for my visual style. Then we'll do a display order. I'll select the surface. I'll right click and I'll choose display order, send to back. This way we can see the surface and the boundary. This makes it very easy to see the triangulation that I don't need. To remove the extra triangulation, let's just add the 3D polyline as a surface boundary. Once again, I'll go back to modify. I want to modify a surface. I want to add data. I want to add a boundary. I'll keep all the default settings here and I'll click OK. I'd like to add this 3D poly. There we go. That trims my surface. Let me orbit this around and you can see we have a nice surface and space representing that pad and the ramp. Now let's convert this surface into a solid. I'll do that by selecting the surface and then I'll open the extract menu. I'll choose extract solids from surface. For a depth I'm going to choose negative 0.5. We'll go down a half a foot. For the layer, let me click the layer button, and I'm going to put this solid on the same layer as all of the other solids. They happen to be on the sketch layer. I'll click OK, OK, and I'll choose Create Solid. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape to deselect. At this point, I no longer need the surface. Let me click to select it. I'll choose Tin Surface, and then I'll press Delete to remove it from the drawing. Let's do a little more housekeeping. I am going to change the color of this solid just to make it a little easier to identify. Once it's selected, I'll go over to the Properties palette, and I'll change the color to red. I will then press escape. Let's do one more thing. I no longer need that 3D polyline around the outer edge. I'm going to click here at the outside. I'll select that 3D polyline and I'll press delete to remove it from the drawing. I will then come down and open my isolate menu and choose end object isolation. Let's orbit this around. We'll pan over. 
And then I'm going to open the visual style menu and we'll set this back to conceptual. As you can see, using Civil 3D's surfacing tools, we can very easily create a solid that represents the pad and ramp. Using the same workflow, we can create solids for these remaining pads, as well as the flat areas between the stairs. Let me center this again on screen. Now that we've fleshed out the southernmost part of our model, we are ready to assign some materials so we can move this data into InfraWorks. We'll look at how to do that in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.